Hello. Welcome to Stanford's webinar on the new graduate joint degree program in computer science and business. My name is Allison Davis, and I'm with the MBA Admissions Office. I'm joined by my colleagues Becky Charbot, who is a career advisor at the Business School Career Center, Mary Oleksi, who oversees the joint and dual degree programs for the Business School, and Jay Subramanian, who is Director of Admissions from Computer Science. We have 45 minutes today, and we do have lots of information we'd like to share with you. Uh, thank you to so many of you who did send in questions in advance. Your questions fell into several specific topics, which we're going to address in the next 45 minutes. So I'm going to start with uh, asking Mary, who um, again oversees the joint and dual degree programs for the business school. And if you do pursue this joint degree, you will get to know Mary very well because she will be uh, advising you on, on um, your, your program while you're here. And Mary, if you could start out by telling us the purpose of the joint degree and, and the value of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so welcome, everybody. Uh, just a few things about this joint degree program. I think uh, many folks know that Stanford's really well known as being an incubator for new technology ventures. So we feel like this degree is going to be really complementary to that endeavor. And our hope is that this degree is going to foster innovation that springs naturally from two of our world-class programs, being the GSB and our computer science department. So the purpose of this degree program is going to be to provide an opportunity for computer scientists to develop necessary skills to be managers and entrepreneurs, and for technologically inclined business students to gain a solid background in computer science by combining these two degrees into a really focused and intentional approach. So what the program looks like, uh, it's a three-year program that you would uh, ideally start at the GSB and do one year of our core curriculum coursework. Following that, you would have two years of really a blend of MBA electives along with computer science required courses and computer science electives. This is a full-time program, so we do not offer part-time or remote learning opportunities. Uh, the idea is that you are here with us for three years, full time, in person. And uh, we will be, the program breaks out into 84 GSB or MBA units, along with 45 computer science units, uh, to a total of 129 units. And uh, again, you would be completing that in three years. We don't have a set number of students that will be in the program as we are really looking for quality more than quantity. And so it's really students that fit this either business wanting to have the technology lean or starting in computer science and wanting the business and leadership skills. I'm going to turn to Jay now uh, from computer science and Jay talk a little bit about who is this program really meant for? Who is the ideal candidate? Um, hello, everyone. Um, looking for someone who's uh, looking to lead organizations or teams in a technical environment, uh, anyone who's at the intersection of technology and business, uh, it's a combination of being able to get this technical skill set as a result of doing the Master's in Computer Science program. Next, uh, Jay and I would like to walk you through the application requirements for each of uh, the programs, and you do apply to the program separately, uh, and you fill out uh, two different applications. So uh, let me start with uh, the MBA, and um, here on my screen, I'm showing you the application deadlines for uh, students coming September uh, of 2014, and for the MBA program, you do have a choice of three application deadlines, and you see the application deadline and then when you would receive your decision. So uh, for the MBA, um, if you were interested in applying for computer science as well, we would strongly encourage 
to apply in round one or round two deadline. And the reason for that is so that you get your decision uh, for the MBA uh, before, uh, uh, before you get your decision from uh, computer science so you can be making an informed decision uh, about your options. If you are, um, you can apply in round three, that, that's certainly possible, but what will happen is that you will get a decision from the business school in May and you will have had to uh, reply to your offer from computer science in uh, April. So, uh, uh, if you want to be able to, to, to know your full options, you would apply in rounds one or round round one or round two. Uh, so, basically, for um, the business school, uh, there's an application form, and you can access it here on the apply button. Uh, if you're applying for this joint degree program, you must take the GRE. You do not take the GMAT. Uh, if you're an international student, uh, we would require you, both schools uh, would require you to take the TOEFL uh, with a minimum score of 113. So again, if you're applying only to the MBA, you have some other options for your English language uh, test, but if you are applying for the joint degree, you must take the TOEFL. Uh, we ask you for academic transcript, of course and uh, employment history. There is no work experience that is required. You can uh, come here straight from university. Uh, at the business school, we do ask you for a set of essays, and the essay questions are posted here uh, on our website. You can refer to those. We also ask for three letters of reference, and uh, these uh, should come two of them from a professional um, relationship. So it could be a uh, um, previous supervisor, client, vendor. Uh, one of them should be from a current supervisor. Um, and if you're coming in without work experience, it could be from a summer job or it could be from an intern. Like that. And then the third reference needs to be from a peer. And that could be a peer uh, in a work situation or in an ex Situation. To go back to the recommendations for a moment, with the two professional ones, the second one, as I mentioned, could be from a previous supervisor or um, it could be from an extracurricular uh, activity. So, uh, you know, if you uh, did some volunteer work for somebody who supervised you in that capacity. So, I'm going to now turn it over to Jay and she can walk you through the application process for computer science? So to start off, there's only one admission cycle for the Master's in Computer Science program. And, um, and that is in autumn quarter. All the students are, that are applying to our Master's program are being uh, considered to come in for the autumn quarter. Um, I know there were a lot of uh, questions in terms of can, what, what's the kind of background that we're looking for for the students who are applying to the MSCS program. You do not have to have a CS undergrad major, but we're looking at strong analytical and quantitative skills. Um, so that is something that you should bear in mind when you're applying to this program. Apart from that, uh, we're looking at uh, the um, statement of purpose that the students are required to submit, and all of this application process is done online. Your statement of purpose should be very concise, focused, and well-written, uh, and clearly indicate the reasons in terms of why you're applying to this program. Um, there are three letters of recommendation uh, that is required, uh, and we recommend that at least two of these uh, letters come from academic sources. Our uh, MSCS program uh, is a course based. There's a 45 unit uh, requirement. Therefore, we want to look at your uh, academic potential when you are bringing in your uh, letters of recommendation. So, um, three letters of recommendation, statement of purpose. Um, everyone is required to take the GRE scores. And for the international students, they are required to take TOEFL scores. Um, other than that, if you have any work experience, do highlight that in your statement of purpose, but you're not required to have a work experience in order to apply for this program. Um, just, you know, 
mentioned about your capacity for analytical thinking and ability to um, um, express your analytical and quantitative skills when you are writing up your uh, statement of purpose. That's kind of in a nutshell in terms of what the requirements and the uh, background of the student uh, should be. Jay, what about the uh, recommended um, courses that they might take if they have um, a non-technical background? So for those who do not have a CS background, um, it is recommended that um, you um, take some of these foundation courses. Here's a list, list of the foundation uh, courses uh, that could help you in preparing better for applying to the MSDS program, for, particularly for those who do not have a CS background or do not have a strong analytical and quantitative skills and are coming from more of the humanity, humanities and sciences background. This will kind of better prepare you to um, apply for the Master's in Computer Science program. And if you want a more detailed information about um, what the course syllabi for each of these courses is, if you go into stanford.edu, our main website, and uh, on the, yes, please, okay. and on the Explore, um, and if you click on the on the search site right here, Explore Courses, uh, it brings up all the courses that are available uh, at our university, and um, Yes, please. And if you can, if you type the CS103, you can see um, a little description of what what this foundation course is all about, and if there's any prerequisite involved. Uh, so that is how you can uh, type in each of these foundation courses and get more information on what the course content uh, is likely to be. So Jay, somebody who's um uh, does need to do some of this preparation. Uh, they could look at the uh, course descriptions and then look for those courses in their local area that correct. might cover. That's correct. A and they um, don't necessarily need to be at the graduate level. They could be undergraduate that is courses correct. or that is even correct. at a community college, perhaps. Or absolutely. Yes. Okay. It can and, be anywhere. and as part of their application, then would they would it be a good idea for them to send the transcripts of, of these courses? Yes, um, um, transcripts indicating that they have taken these courses and done well would certainly um, give them a better edge. Could they take these courses through the Stanford Continuing Professional Development online? Yes, so there's an option of taking these courses for credit through the non-degree option program, and uh, for that you will have to um, go to the SCPD, Stanford Center for Professional Development, scpd.stanford.edu. Um, and look at the courses that are being offered through these NDO, pro NDO programs and apply to them and get accepted. And is there some advantage? Would they have an edge because it's a Stanford course? No, that's not really true because, you know, we're looking at applications that's coming from all over the world and um, several other uh, aspects that are also taken into consideration when they're being reviewed. I know some people had written in in advance asking if work experience was required. It is not required um, for applying to the program. However, if they do have the work experience, I would encourage them to mention that uh, on their statement of purpose and that's definitely a highlight, yes. Okay. And work experience in, um, in uh, high tech, is that preferred or desired? No. Or? Uh, it's not required, so it, there's no preference as such. So if they have it, by all means highlight it, but if you don't have it, it's not like you're not eligible to apply to the program. Okay. It's not a requirement. Great. Thank you, Jay. Yes. Uh, now I'm going to turn to Becky Charbot from our Career Management Center, and she's going to talk about what would be some of the career paths that um, students graduating from this joint degree might pursue um, and uh, what the general career opportunities are for students from this joint degree. So Becky? Great. Great. Thanks, Allison. Hi, everyone. I'd like to add my welcome to the mix, so thanks for being on the call. Um, as Allison introduced me earlier, I work in the Career Management Center. Um, I'm a recruiting relationship manager, so I spend a lot of my time meeting with companies, particularly in technology, um, and then I meet with students um, on a case-by-case -case basis as well doing more tactical advising, so not necessarily the big picture career and life vision, I'm going to help you narrow down your focus, but more you know you want to work in tech, you know you want to work in whatever particular function, and 
um, we can talk about companies and we talk about um, contacts and ways to communicate with those companies. So that's kind of my background. Um, I do a lot of tech outreach. So in this past year, I've communicated with way over 200 companies, um, everything from e-commerce to um, consumer internet, enterprise, big data, um, from the two-person startup to the Googles and the Apples of the world, So and everything in between. Um, I think that every single company I talk to, um, basically every company I talk to says, do you have engineers? <laughs> So if you obviously you're interested in pursuing this degree, so you're um, you're you know very interested in this space. Um, if our MBA students, a number of them do come from engineering backgrounds, but a lot of them now obviously are looking at this as an opportunity to um, pursue a career and really bring something extra to the table. Um, a lot of students come to me wanting to do product management, uh, and I think that obviously if you're able to talk the talk of an engineer and be able to speak to both engineers and lead cross-functional teams, um, both from a business side and an engineering side, you don't necessarily have to code as a product manager. However, um, if you can, that is incredibly desirable, and um, a lot of companies are looking for that. So I would say more and more these days, companies are asking for, um, for our students to be able to code, maybe not every single day, but to at least have that, that knowledge and that familiarity. Um, so obviously, there are not just product management roles that you can pursue in tech. There's many, many more. Um, but that is the one that tends to come up um, most specifically for companies that want engineering backgrounds. Um, and I think in this in this industry, you know, you're in the Silicon Valley. It is tremendous if you're able to, like I said, bring that to the table. So I think this is a really unique opportunity. Um, that would allow you to, to do that and do it very well. Becky, a lot of our students uh, just generally in the MBA program are interested in entrepreneurship and a good percent, I, what was it? So last year, last year was, was, uh, we had between 10 and 15 percent of people, of MBA students pursuing their own company, their own startup right. within the last couple of years. Right. So and so um, would you talk a little bit about how uh, the computer science that that background might help them with their own ventures? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of our MBA students, as we were just saying, do pursue their own startup. And we have a, a wonderful um, venture lab through the Center for Entrepreneurial Studies that allows students to kind of have their own incubator here at the GSB and work with the Center for Entrepreneurial Studies to get advising on best practices and t tips and tricks for starting you know, the very basics and workshops for starting their own company. Um, a lot of students will try to, if they don't have an engineering background, they'll work with students, um, they'll try to work with students in the School of Engineering, but what we're finding is that, again, more and more venture capitalists want students who have the, the knowledge and the skill set from both sides. So a lot of engineers will start their own company because they can, they can create their company, so to speak, um, and, you know, they can kind of figure out the business side. But on the business side, if you can't create your company from a, from a design and coding perspective, you, you really need to partner with an engineer, right? So in this case, um, if you have the ability to do both, drive the business and create the, the foundation and the code and the, the design for the company, I mean, you can do it all, basically. So I think um, there is definitely the opportunity um, for MBAs to partner with people in CS but again, I think from a startup perspective, if you have the knowledge to at least at least a familiarity to do both, um, you're going to be leaps and bounds above. Actually, among our current students, we certainly have had uh, entrepreneurs that the reason they're pursuing the MBA is they had some kind of failed venture, and it was uh, typically not a failure because of the product idea, but because they weren't able to uh, manage the organization, you know, the HR function. They weren't able to be really savvy about the financing. And so often that is why they're coming for the MBA after they've, they've had a, a venture fail. So, uh, you know, to really be successful mm -hmm. uh, with your own venture, uh, you know, being able to, to be strategic and to really understand organizational behavior, which is what you'll get from the MBA side, is going to be a, um, a huge asset. I think that's a great point. I think there's definitely, um, if you can, like Alison was saying, if you can do both, um, you're going to be golden in the valley. So let's uh, move uh, 
actually, let's move on to talk uh, about during the program, what are the opportunities, uh, and I'm going to look to you, Becky and Jay, what are the opportunities to interact with Silicon Valley companies? What are the internship opportunities that uh, joint degree students would have? So we have a computer forum um, in our department that um, connects a lot of our uh, students. In fact, it's open to any student who wants to um, look at internship opportunities and eventually job prospects with uh, Silicon Valley companies. So these are all member companies that have signed up um, under this computer forum. So a lot of our students are actually advised and guided in terms of how to write up your resume and how um, they can do interviewing um, through, uh, for an internship or a full-time or a contractual position. Uh, so technically the students are connected with uh, a um, Silicon Valley company where they come in and do career affairs or um, job interviews um, in our department. So we have a couple of conference rooms that are uh, lined up for them. And there's also um, a huge event that uh, happens once a year uh, where we get all of these member companies to come and uh, talk about uh, what they're looking for. Um, and uh, um, also um, look at um, possibly look at some of our students who are graduating to hire them eventually. So those are some of the um, activities that our computer science students can get involved with. What kind of uh, what are some of the companies uh, that are members of this computer forum? Uh, so you know. Certain companies that come to my mind are Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, Facebook. I mean, these are companies yeah. that are in the Silicon Valley, so it's easier all for of, them all to be here. Yeah. But there are some that are outside of the Bay Area and uh, mm -hmm. come in for these computer forms. I, I think, that's what it yeah, is. I think that's a question that people will have: is is uh, is their job prospects really limited to the Silicon Valley? What what do you think, Becky? So I think the answer, the short answer, is no. Um, the job prospects are pretty much endless. We do have a large majority of students that do stay in the Silicon Valley. I think that's largely one by choice because you, can't, you really can't beat the weather <laughs> and, and the things to do, obviously, but two, because this is the heart of a lot of where technology is now. Of course, New York, Silicon Valley, of course, that's tremendously growing and there's a large interest there. We do a lot of outreach there as well. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was the, the outreach trips that both the Career Management Center as well as student clubs do. So, for example, this year, the student, the high tech club, led a trek to South by Southwest. I felt fortunate that I got to tag along with them, but basically they met with um, HomeAway, Facebook, Austin Ventures. Um, there was an alumni reception hosted at, at HomeAway, and then we met with about 50 companies um, throughout the South by Southwest weekend. So a really great opportunity to network with companies all over the country and all over the world, really, um, that come and kind of gravitate toward that type of event. But there's a number of other events that the Career Management Center, as well as both the High Tech Club and the, um, the Entrepreneurship Club and the Venture Capital Club drive um, for Stanford students. And I think it's really, a, Stanford offers a lot of really unique networking-based opportunities and educational opportunities um, for students. And so obviously I can speak to the MBA side because that's the student population that I work with. Um, a couple of those examples are we hosted a tech crawl last October it was basically envision a pub crawl to SOMA companies, so, um, companies in the south of market area in San Francisco. So we visited some early stage startups um, or mid, mid stage startups like Jawbone, TaskRabbit, Inkling, Hipmunk. So a number of different companies that we visited for that and each company hosted um, us with you know cocktails or beverages and snacks. So that was a really fun way to interact with companies. Um, We've got, um, we work very closely with a lot of venture firms, so we hosted a speed networking event with a venture firm last February, or this past February, where they brought in 10 of their portfolio companies, and each company gave a two-minute spiel about what they were um, looking to do for hiring, what their company was all about, and then really gave a really personalized opportunity for students to network with them. And then we also hosted a fewer than 300 event in April, which brought in about 30 early-stage startups all with fewer than 300 employees, and just like a really fun kind of casual networking opportunity that students were able to so source jobs and internships from. And then finally, um, we do the Career Management Center sponsors company networking nights. So we do those. We do two of those in the fall, um, and we bring in over 40 companies, both large and small. This is more of a traditional event. 
So some of the companies, like Jay was speaking about, like the Microsofts and the Apples of the world, will come to those types of events for networking opportunities that then leads into on-campus recruiting. Um, and that's all hosted by the Career Management Center. And um, about 70% of our MBA students do participate in on-campus recruiting. So obviously that would be very much available to you in this program as well. It is typical um, to at both the computer science uh, department and the business school for students to do summer internships. Mm -hmm. And so could you talk a little bit about summer internships, um, Jay, that, uh, at the computer science and Becky at, uh, from the business school perspective? Sure. Um, so a lot of students um, either apply directly to the companies and because they, they have the advantage of um, doing the master's in computer science from Stanford University, um, they get, uh, I would say, more preference as far as internship because of the fact that we're in the Silicon Valley. Uh, we have a lot of our uh, current students who are doing summer internship um, with Facebook and Yahoo and Microsoft. Um, and we also facilitate by uh, through the computer forum for them to look at internship opportunities. Typically, these are done during summer quarter uh, for the master's in computer science program. Becky. Yeah, so our students, pretty much 100% of our students that want to pursue an internship um, over their summer do get an internship. In this case, I would imagine there would be two internship opportunities. Um, and so I think this, that's obviously a great way to expand your skill set, network within the, um, the tech community, you know, in San Francisco or the Bay Area or all over the world. Um, and we do, the Career Management Center does a ton to work with students on a very individualized basis to help them pursue their interests, the companies of interest, um, and make contacts, both with alumni as well as um, non-alumni, too. So um, there's a very, you know, we work very closely with students um, from that perspective. And so internships are definitely something that most, if not all, students pursue. Right. And one thing I'd like to emphasize is if you're part of this joint degree program, you are um, uh, welcome and to take advantage of opportunities at either school. So you may find that there's certain quarters where you're only taking business school courses or there's certain quarters where maybe you're only taking computer science courses or a uh, combination of both, but you are an uh, enrolled student at both departments, so you take advantage of all the opportunities and resources uh, at, at both schools. And uh, that's true of all the clubs. You you're, uh, uh, can be a member of clubs at, at both schools. And, and Mary, I'd ask you to comment a little bit from your experience with other joint degree programs, just in terms of, you know, the social life for joint degree students. Are they kind of, you know, their own cohort, or are they part of the larger community? How does that work? Yeah, thank you. Um, so I think all of our students enjoy uh, a very uh, diverse set of opportunities in regards to social life. There's just a lot to do here. And whether you start here first at the GSB, or if you choose to start at your other program, uh, you are always welcome and included in all of the GSB uh, student activities and events. Uh, from the joint and dual degree program standpoint, we do offer uh, opportunities to meet other joint students uh, at the start of the academic year. So you'll have an opportunity to kind of meet and greet folks that are maybe starting at the GSB first or folks that could be starting with computer science first. And it's a really rich and active life here, uh, so I do recommend it. And um, I just want to add in one little comment about housing, because there was a question about, like, well, where do I live? Do I live with MBAs or do I live with computer science students? Um, and really, the question more has to do with how Stanford runs its housing. And as a first-year master's degree student, you have preference for on-campus housing. So most students in the first year of their MBA or master's degree will live on campus. But in following years, they do tend to live off campus as they've made friends and prefer that off campus living experience. Um, so again, you'll have the opportunity to take advantage of the social opportunities, both from the computer science side um, and the uh, MBA side. Great. One thing I'd like to just loop back in terms of the admissions process that I think we neglected to emphasize is that uh, you do apply to the two schools separately and the decisions are made separately. There will be a place on the computer science uh, application where you're asked 
to check a box if you're uh, going to be applying to the MBA program and the MBA application, there's a box for you to indicate that you'll be applying to the uh, computer science. But the decisions are made separately and there no, is no, you know, you may be, uh, hopefully you'll be admitted to both programs, but you might be admitted to one and not the other and you certainly uh, would have the option to reapply, but uh, it's not like you're disadvantaged in some way or there is some advantage to apply to both programs or one program. It, it really is two separate, um, two separate processes. So uh, we're going to wrap up here uh, with talking about uh, the cost of the program and financial aid. And um, the uh, tuition for the business school, and I'm, I'm, uh, this is on our website under financial aid, uh, this is the tuition for students coming in this fall, so uh, uh, may of course be different for next year. But you can see the student budget. Basically, uh, for a single student living on campus, tuition and all the living expenses, uh, the cost of the program is about $94,000 per year. And then, Jay, for the computer science portion. So, in terms of the tuition cost, uh, we're talking about uh, generally all of the students take only three quarters. Three quarters is generally considered to be one academic year. Not everyone is required to be enrolled in the summer quarter. Each quarter costs about um, 9850 um, which totals up to 29, uh, approximately 29 grand. Um, and that's the tuition cost and the, the non-tuition charge, um, the student housing and all the other stuff um, amounts to about 27141 uh, uh, So the total cost comes out to be, if I can round it off, to about uh, 56691 uh, for one academic year. I'd like to uh, bring in Jack Edwards into the conversation here because he is uh, the financial aid director at the business school and we would encourage you if you're applying, um, uh, if you're not, a, uh, for example, a current computer science uh, student at Stanford but you are applying from the outside, we would recommend that uh, if you are admitted to both programs that you would actually start at the business school. And because there are some advantages in terms of the financial aid and uh, your financial aid, if you were to start at the business school, would be administered for all three years uh, of your program uh, by our GSB financial aid office. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Jack, and, um, and have you uh, weigh in here. Hello, folks, and um, welcome. Um, so. As Allison mentioned, the advantage of um, starting at the business school um, allows us to be able to provide financial aid to you for the entire time in your in the program. Um, what it also is is that the business school is in a position to be able to provide financing for all students, both domestic and international students. Um, we have a our own international student loan program that does not require students to have a U.S. citizen as a co-signer or um, require them to have the U.S. Social Security number in order to receive student loans. Financial aid works in, the, in that it will, if you are eligible, we will consider you eligible for fellowship dollars for six total uh, quarters. Um, and then in the third year, if you're doing your, your studies, you would be eligible to borrow student loans in order to fund for those costs. Um, our hope is, is, since this program's new, is, is that eventually down the road that we may be able to find resources for fellowship dollars for specifically for a master's in computer science MBA joint degree student. Um, these are things for us on the horizon that we will be working towards. And so eventually we may have funding that may be eligible through fellowship dollars, free money, to be eligible in your third year. I know uh, some of you had submitted questions asking about the Reliance Fellowship and if you were, uh, could you apply to uh, the Reliance Fellowship and be part of this program? And the answer is yes, that you could. Yes, you could, but the Reliance program is strictly for the two years. Right. And that's it. So it would only cover the two years um, that you're being billed your MBA cost. 
MBA tuition. Okay. So, Jack, can you walk through a little bit then, so if somebody's here for eight or nine quarters, uh, you know, are they paying, they're, they're paying GSB tuition for six of those quarters and whatever the other two quarters are would be at the uh, graduate, uh, Stanford graduate uh, yes, rate. Yes, that's correct. So the six quarters that you are as classified as the MBA student, your tuition billing will be based as the business school cost, tuition costs. And in the third year, you would be billed as a graduate engineering tuition rate, yeah. um, which sometimes is a little bit different than just the other graduate programs at the university. Okay. So, um, and so there's a cost savings because of the, the difference in the cost between the business school and the engineering school. Right. And if we didn't mention it earlier, you the the advantage of I mean, there are many advantages to doing the joint program, but one advantage is if you were to do these two degrees separately, uh, you would probably be here an extra one or two quarters. So you are saving up to one or two quarters of, of tuition by doing the joint program. We do need to close uh, in a few minutes. I think I'll just ask Mary if you have um, any advice since you uh, do every day uh, advise joint degree students in the program, if you have any advice about being a joint degree student here or the application process, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I would just encourage all of you out there to really think about what is your goal or what is your focus? What are you trying to accomplish and what is the right pathway? Um, because for some folks, it might be that just taking a handful of CS courses is going to be okay. Or for some folks, it could be that just taking a handful of business courses is going to be okay. But if you have a really clear vision for yourself, whether it's that you want to start your own company or you're looking to kind of lock in with a kind of pre-existing, what I'll call one of those mega companies that, uh, from Silicon Valley, then this degree could be a really good fit for you. I think. Um, there are lots of powerful ways you either leverage your degree based on who you are and what your network is or by leveraging the resources offered by both computer science and the GSB. Um, we're really excited about this degree and we're excited to support the students. And just a reminder, uh, as Mary said, you can, as a business school student, take courses at, uh, in the computer science department and up to 12 of those units can actually count towards your MBA degree. So just a reminder about that. And then Jay, um, any last words you'd like to add in terms of uh, computer science? Um, I think um, there was a question about course workload. Um, typically, if you're at the School of Engineering, you're required to take eight to 10 units. Each unit is about, um, uh, each uh, class is about three units, and we're talking about 15 hours a week of work. So eight to 10 units would be about 24 hours a week. And, and it really depends on the combination of courses that you're taking in any quarter. Um, some um, students are super ambitious and take more than that, but um, then there'll be a difference of tuition if you went above the 10 unit limit. I just wanted to make that point, and uh, I would encourage uh, everyone to take a look at the uh, course uh, uh, requirement for the MSCS program on our uh, computer science uh, website, and uh, there's a um, kind of a, um, a scale, uh, outline of the courses that you can take if you choose a specialization in the MSCS program. If you have further questions, uh, you can either contact the MBA uh, admissions office, and uh, here is our contact information. You can uh, ask a question via email or telephone us. We're open uh, 8 to 4 Pacific time. So and that's our there contact again is, uh, email and, uh, and telephone, telephone number. And students are welcome to email us at that. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, uh, Becky, Mary, Jack, and Jay for um, participating this morning. And thank you all out in the audience uh, for your attention and your interest. We're Glad that you're interested in Stanford and hope to see some of you here on campus in the next few years.